Let's talk now to Josh Carpenter, who's assistant managing editor for the magazine Sports Business Journal. Uh, welcome to the programme, Josh. Uh, so uh, we've heard Rory McIlroy saying that this will ultimately be good for golf. He certainly didn't welcome this merger warmly, though. Uh, so do you think the sport of golf wins or loses from this? You know, I, th I think it's a little bit too too soon to tell. I mean, this really came as a shock, I think, to, to everyone, but really a handful of people who kind of orchestrated this deal. You know, we're just over 24 hours from it being announced. So it'll take a little bit of time to really digest it and figure out how good or how bad it is for the game. Um, from a pure competition standpoint, look, the PGA Tour gets an influx of cash. I mean, the, the number, I think, $3 billion U.S. dollars has been thrown out there that they're, that they're getting from the public investment fund of, of Saudi Arabia. Um, so certainly there's, they're going to have more money at their disposal. Um, their chief, chief competitor for the last you know year to 18 months in Live Golf is off the board, so they don't have to worry about you know the ongoing litigation is going to end. Um, so that competitor is off the board. They're going to have more money at their disposal to kind of they can, and they can control that money now, right, um, with that investment. So that's from a, a pure competition standpoint. The flip side of that, uh, there are a lot of people who have issues with the, the Saudi funding. We all know, you know some of the human rights issues they have um, in that country. And so there are a lot of really staunch PGA Tour supporters who were against Live Golf because of that Saudi funding. Um, you know, so now it's, it's really going to be a thing of seeing how those supporters, um, whether it be fans, whether it be sponsors, whether it be network, uh, you know, television partners, how they react to this this influx of cash um, from Saudi Arabia. Well, I should say there has been uh, some criticism uh, of this move uh, by Saudi Arabia. Some people calling it sports washing. Uh, what do you make of it? Well, I mean, if, listen, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on sports washing or human rights issues, but I think the definition of sports washing is when you see a company that has some, or not a company, a country that has some of these issues, um, they pump money into sports so that it makes them look a little bit better. And if you look at Saudi Arabia, the money that they've put into, you know, Premier League soccer, into Formula One racing, and now into golf, um, it seemed, as Rory McIlroy said earlier today, it seemed kind of inevitable that, that Saudi Arabia money was going to come into golf at some point. Um, so whether it's sports washing or not, I don't know. But the fact that, you know, you just asked me a question and I'm sitting here talking about just strictly the competition standpoint, that golf might be better um, because of some of this money that, that that's coming in. One might say that that kind of accomplishes their goal, right? And also Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia has wanted a seat at the table in global golf, um, and they had a seat with with Live Golf, and now they're going to have an, an even bigger seat with with the you know partnering with the PGA Tour. So how awkward will this be uh, for players uh, like Rory McIlroy, uh, who originally uh, refused to move over because this whole thing got pretty acrimonious, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Um, th there are a lot of relationships. I think that, you know, player to player, maybe that, that won't be repaired between Rory and some others. And, you know, listen, a lot of the players who left the PGA Tour to join Live Golf, they sued the PGA Tour. And when you sue the PGA Tour, you know, in effect, not in effect, you sue their members as well. So you've got players like Phil Mickelson, you know, some of these other guys who were on this lawsuit, they're suing their, their former colleagues at the PGA Tour. So there can be a lot, a lot of hurt feelings. Uh, you know, on the tour side, you've got guys like, like Rory, like Tiger, like Hideki Matsuyama, who were offered just these huge sums of money to join Liv. They stayed loyal to the tour. Um, and turn live down because of the Saudi funding or whatever. Um, and now the tour is a partner with that very um, investment fund that they were speaking out against. So Jay Monahan is going to have his hands full when it comes to mending these relationships with these players and getting them to, uh, to trust him again. So uh, what does it mean uh, for the immediate future of, of golf, the upcoming Ryder Cup uh, and other events, and perhaps uh, later on uh, the future of the sport? Yeah, the future of the sport's going to be interesting um, based on, you know, based on Jay, Jay Monahan's comments yesterday and then again this morning. It seems like Live Golf, as it currently exists, probably will not exist beyond this year. Live's going to play out the rest of their, their 2023 schedule. But beyond that, you know, Jay said yesterday that he doesn't see it as being feasible for the two tours to play kind of concurrently at the same time. So 
Um, it'll be interesting, but he did say also that he wants to kind of interject that that team concept into this new company, this new global golf entity that they're forming, along with Liv and the PIF and the DP World Tour. So um, it seems like Liv is, is maybe going away. But beyond that, it's it's really still hard to uh, to figure out what it'll look like next year, and even in you know you know five years down the road. I certainly think uh, with you know the DP World Tour being part of this, with the PIF being part of this, I think you're not going to just see a you know a U.S. based tour. You'll certainly see them hit some markets, uh, play in some markets and countries that maybe they haven't um, played in as much uh, you know in the past. Um, so that's, I think, one thing to, to look out for. Josh, uh, good to talk to you. Thanks uh, for sharing your thoughts today. That's Josh Carpenter from Sports Business Journal magazine.